Hey there, Alex Kidman here, and today I'm taking a look at the Motorola Razr 40. So this is Motorola's cheaper foldable phone. So here in Australia, they've got the Razr 40 and the Razr 40 Ultra. The 40 Ultra now is the Razr Plus in some markets, and I think this might just be the Razr in those places. I'm really not sure, but this is their cheaper model. Here in Australia, it sells for $999, which is a new low price point for any foldable phone and that initially had me quite excited i've been testing it out over the past couple of weeks and here's my thoughts here's what i've found but i'm going to do this review a little bit simpler than most i'm just going to shoot this straight on my rather messy desk so if you'll just permit me to change perspectives okay so here we are now back down on the desk and here's the razor 40 and rather like it's slightly more expensive sibling the razor 40 ultra this is a phone that doesn't really have that Razer style that Motorola's previous Razer foldables have had. It's more got a bit of what I'd really call flip style. They've, they've sort of borrowed some ideas from Samsung here. But I think they're actually pretty good ideas because not having that jutting chin on the main screen, for example, that's a big plus in my view. So in design terms, the way that Motorola keeps this cheaper is by having a much simpler external display, just a 1.5 inch OLED display that you can see just there. And if you flip it open though, you do get a full 6.9 inch display, uh, quite a bit nicer of course, uh, fairly similar to that on the Razer 40 Ultra, although not quite as bright if that matters to you. But still, reasonable, quite workable for most everyday kind of tasks. Of course, the other aspect of foldable phones is the external display. And here you're talking notifications and very, very simple things indeed. And look, I've got to say, I find it very hard to get excited. And maybe I've been spoiled a bit by the Razer 40 Ultra because it's got most of that panel as a screen and it can run Android apps and you can do all sorts of things. But I found when I was testing that, that I really very rarely wanted to open up the phone. I could do most of what I wanted to do quickly without having to do that. If I wanted to use the phone, I could then do that. With this, it's almost the exact reverse. Every single time I get a notification, it's like, oh, if I need to really know more about that, well, then I've got to unfold it, and then, you know, why have I got a foldable phone? I don't like it quite as much, but I get why that's the case. I get why this is in this particular space. And at the price point, it's okay, but you can certainly do better. And I found over time, I was liking the Razer 40 Ultra more and more, and this just that little bit less. In terms of color choices, Motorola in Australia sells it in vanilla cream, that's what this one is, summer lilac, which is kind of purple, or sage green, with this faux leather finish. Now, I've got to say, I don't love it. This certainly isn't the color that I would personally choose, but I'm also just not a big fan of that feel of faux leather. Now, I know tastes can vary on that, but I also figure with this kind of off-white and a faux leather thing, over time, that's actually just going to end up looking stained, I think, rather than, you know, nicely leather-worn, even if you do like that style. Still, the folding all works fairly well. The crease is still there, of course. But honestly, in kind of day-to-day -day usage, you mostly don't notice it unless you are running your thumb up and down where the exact crease is, or, of course, unless you've actually got it folded. The other important aspect, and one that has come up an awful lot in recent times for foldables, has been this question of durability. And here, Motorola and their primary competitor in the Australian market, Samsung, differ a little. So the Samsung flip phones, like the recently announced Z Flip 5, but its predecessor, the Z Flip 4, was the same, are IPX8 rated. So what does that mean? Well, that means basically you can immerse them fully in clean lab water, no, your bath doesn't count, and they should survive. The Razer 40, on the other hand, is IP52 rated. And what that means is that basically, like light water splashes should be okay, but immersion, nah, that'll kill it stone dead. So the flip's better? Well, no, because this is IP52, and that 5 means that it's actually rated for a reasonable degree of dust ingress. Dust and grit and sand and all those other daily things are less likely to get into this phone. Not Never likely, but less likely. It's not completely protected, but it is more protected than any of the flip phones are, or at least than any of the flip phones are rated to be. And you've got to think at this stage that if Samsung thought it could get away with an IP dust rating for the flips, it would do it. It hasn't, but it's kind of a balancing act. And I think the razors come off a little bit better in this regard. 
Why? Well, because over time, you're probably going to get dust and maybe a bit of moisture in your phone. Very few of us deliberately go surfing with our phones, though. Although, of course, actually salt water wouldn't count anyway. It'd get in and kill the phone. Do not surf with your phone. What about the cameras? So on the, well, this gets really difficult to describe, but on the rear, as I'm showing it to you here, of the Razer 40, you have dual lenses. So you've got a 64 megapixel primary and 13 megapixel ultra wide and macro. Whereas in the front and um, at the top here, you've got a 32 megapixel front sensor. Now, here's an oddity. At a number level, that's actually better than the Razer 40 Ultra, which has 12 megapixel, 13 megapixel rear and 32 megapixel front. The devil's in the detail here, however, because the Razer 40 Ultra actually has a more light sensitive primary sensor. And it's one that means that it shoots just a little bit better. But that's not really what you're here for. Does the Razer 40 shoot well? Well, it's okay. I, I can't get that excited about it. And I really have to weigh this against what you can get at a $999 price point, which includes things like Google's current crop of Pixel phones. And bear in mind, I'm recording this before its 2023 Pixel phones come out. Those could be even better, but a, a Pixel 7 or a Pixel 7a, they'll shoot rings around this thing, unfortunately for the Razer 40. It's not a bad camera, but it could be a fair degree better. And if camera is important to you, yeah, these, these foldable flip phones have just consistently had this weird problem where they've had okay cameras at best, but never anything that's really excited me. I can sort of forgive that on a slightly cheaper phone like this, but it's still a bit of a problem because even at this slightly lower price point, you can do a little bit better. The other way that Motorola has managed to keep the costs down for the Razer 40 is with what's inside it. You've got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 1. Now that's a lower grade system, even than the Razer 40 Ultra and certainly than the Galaxy Z Flip 5. It's paired up with eight gig of RAM and 256 gig of fixed storage, running a fairly clean Android UI. You do get a few niceties, so you know, I can, uh, I can very quickly twist it like that, for example, to turn the flashlight on. I, I quite like that. It's a kind of silly little gimmick in a way. But hey, it works. It's there. But how does that compare at a power level? Well, not well for the Razer 40, unfortunately, because just about anything in this price range outdoes it, including Motorola's own ThinkPhone, but also Google's Pixel 7 and the even cheaper Pixel 7a for that matter, too. This is not a super slow phone, but again, it sits in that bucket of, look, this could do a bit better on CPU, certainly a bit better on GPU. And if you do push it hard, you will start to see longer load times, maybe a little bit of sluggish performance. This is not a high-end phone, even though it sits at what I would call currently in 2023, the entry level of premium pricing. A thousand bucks, I think, is entry level premium, or if you prefer, I suppose, high mid. But still, the performance of this is not quite where it could be. And again, it's that trade-off. If you want the folding action, if you want to be able to impress people on the train by doing this kind of thing, then that's sort of the price you pay. The other area where I've had problems with flip phones like this in the past have been battery life. Although, to be fair to Motorola, it's done a little better than Samsung's done with its flip phones in my own tests. The Razer 40 has an interesting position because it's got a 4,200 milliamp hour battery, which is actually bigger than the battery you get on the Razer 40 Ultra. That only has 3,800. And the Razer 40 Ultra did pretty well in my tests. So I was keen to see how this would run. So running it through a one hour YouTube streaming battery test, 1080p, full brightness, moderate volume from 100% battery, the Razer 40 retained 97% of its battery. That's a really very, very good score. The only foldable that I've hit that's done better, oddly enough, is the Razer 2022, the exact predecessor to this specific phone. It's, a, it's an interesting comparison point. And it bears out in day-to-day -day usage as well. This thing can get through most days of usage really with very few problems at all. When you do need to recharge it, it's through this USB-C port that you can see here. Motorola does provide a 33 watt charger in the box. It'll actually only do up to 30 watts, but there's always a bit of loss involved in these things. 
It's also wireless charging capable, but here a note of caution because it'll only do 5 watt wireless charging. That's pretty slow by 2023 standards. You'll be waiting a fair while for this thing to charge up. So is this a phone still worth buying? Well, look, certainly if you've got the money and you can bump up to the 40 Ultra, I'd go for that. I do prefer it. I do think it's worth its money. This is probably worth its money if that folding style is important to you. Although I should point out, while the Z Flip 5 is way more expensive than this is, I've seen a lot of Z Flip 4s around at very similar prices, and that's a faster phone than this is. So I'd certainly consider your options. The nice reality here, of course, is that because this is a $999 phone now, in about six months' time, we'll probably see them quite a bit cheaper. That's where they really start to push down into that mid-range. And look, and at mid-range prices, this would be an absolute steal. As it is, it's certainly worth consideration, but you've got to pick and choose which features are really important to you. Anyway, that's my take on this, the Motorola Razr 40. What do you think? Would you prefer this, the Razr 40 Ultra, the Z Flip, the Oppo? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.